Welcome to Wired Up Retro. You're watching episode number 86. Today's episode is all about the Atari Game Station Pro, which is a, a little Atari game system uh, branded with Atari's name. And, you know, right now is kind of an exciting time to be an Atari fan because there's a couple of game systems out. The Atari 2600 Plus, as well as the Atari Game Station Pro, are options for gamers. And really, this episode is about this game system and what it can do using different kinds of controllers. Now, it comes packaged with these pack-in joysticks, and these are nice, they're wireless, and they also have not just the joystick, but a little paddle on board, which enables you to play Atari 2600 paddle games with the games that it comes packaged with. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can also connect them with their wire, or you could say it's a USB connection, uh, into this um, USB Type-C um, port. So the nice thing about that is that these can be reduced a little bit on their lag by plugging them in. And uh, if you're going to be wirelessly connected, you will notice a very subtle amount of lag. To me, it didn't seem real noticeable, but I'm playing paddle games. I could certainly actually perform better, um, and I'm sure on some of the joystick games, using the uh, controllers when they're wired instead of wireless. So just keep that in mind. But anyways, you know, some people like these, some people don't like these controllers. I mean, they kind of glow. It's, it's really a unique looking controller. But, um, you know, some people really want to use the actual uh, authentic 1970s or 80s controller that they were used to using uh, when they were young. And I definitely am into that. And this episode today is going to give you a way to accomplish that. And it's uh, really not terribly expensive. So I think you guys will be very interested to see the episode today and how I did it. Now, the design of the Atari Game Station Pro was to not just use these controllers, but to have alternate options that you could actually use on the game system with a wire, you know, connecting with USB to USB type C connection. So one of those would be the Xbox One controller uh, or Xbox Series X or even an Xbox One Elite. Uh, or Series 2 Elite, any of these will work on this and work pretty well. It's quite compatible. And also the PlayStation 4, um, DualShock 4, will be compatible as well. And I've heard that PlayStation 5 controllers, uh, the DualSense, can work. Um, I haven't actually tested that. Now, you might be wondering, well, what about the older, you know, Xbox 360 controllers or alternate current day controllers like Switch controllers? Here I have a third party one. Um, these on the surface do not seem to be compatible. But what is interesting is if you start up a game, let's say you use this controller to get into the game, you start it, and then you plug this in, the switch controllers will work. Now, not necessarily all of them. I, I did have a little issue getting the Switch Pro controller working, but you know, just standard switch controllers that are wired. Yeah, this definitely is now compatible if, as long as you just are planning on using it when playing the game itself. And so just to be clear, this type of wireless controller isn't going to be compatible, but the wired ones are. And yeah, there's the Switch controller I was using and the 360 controllers. So this was actually a little bit of a surprise to me, you know, that they would work in the games, but just not the menus. So why they designed it like this, I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So anyway, let me show you some of the controllers that I want to get working on this Atari Game Station Pro. And some of you guys could be kind of uh, finding this to be a very appealing option. The Atari 2600 controller with its single button uh, can be made compatible. Uh, or this Atari 7800 joystick, which has two buttons. Um, you could potentially use a Euro pad, which was made for the Atari 7800 back in the day over in Europe. And so that's kind of cool. And there's going to be a new revision of that thanks to the Atari 2600 Plus. And, you know, Atari's coming out with new controllers for that system, which uh, are pretty uh, awesome. So if you like the idea of just getting one of the new controllers, you don't have controllers breaking down and getting oxidized on their contacts and not working right, you know, that's exciting. And, and you can definitely do that. But this adapting method is going to be pretty interesting because not only can you use Atari controllers, but maybe you would prefer a D-pad controller like a Genesis controller. Uh, a three-button one will work. Um, a six-button one will work. Uh, or a Nintendo NES controller. Or maybe you have a Super Nintendo controller. These are all going to be able to work. Now, back on Wired Up Retro, episode number 84, I showed you um, the full-fledged, you know, explanation video on how to use 
the adapter that we're going to feature in this video. So definitely check that video out if you haven't already, because that's going to show you how to set it up in your laptop or PC. You know, you can actually download firmware into the uh, special adapter we're going to feature today. And that, that kind of goes deeply into it. Today, I'll just be touching on some aspects, but uh, if you really want to go deep, watch episode 84. So other controllers that might be interesting to use um, would be this. Um, this is an Epix 500XJ that I had converted many years ago to work on my Atari 7800. It's kind of got a nice clicky aspect to it, two buttons on board. I think this could be a, a potentially a good option. And some of you might have some great NES joystick um, controllers. This is one of my favorites, the Star Master. Love it. And uh, suction cups always add to the fun if you've got a table in front of you. And yeah, your uh, trusty old NES controller. And this one, the Jazz controller. Um, you know, I'm pressing that start button. A lot of the games require a start button to get started. So having a joystick with a start button is valuable in the GSP. So I've also got other options, like let's say a uh, PlayStation controller uh, that can be made compatible as well. And you know some of the unique PlayStation controllers you might want to think about using would be like arcade sticks made for PS2. So this will be able to work as well. And there are numerous others that are going to work with this adaptation method. And I'm really especially excited about showing you that trackball, so definitely stay tuned. All right, so now I want to explain to you the step-by-step -step method that we'll use to get these controllers working. So first and foremost, I want you to, if you're using a modern TV with HDMI capability, you want to have a TV that's got a game mode or gaming mode, which will enable you to not have so much lag, okay? And then next, you're going to need a, one of these little USB standard to USB Type-C adapters, okay? And these come cheaply, you know, $3.99 at minimum, maybe at most $12 bucks or $15. Bucks. But this will go right here in the USB Type-C port to open it up to using just standard USB uh, as a connection. So um, now for the, the main attraction of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Gamer Pro Advance. This is a product made by Blissbox, and it, this came out just in 2023, around last summer. So uh, this is a product that had been in beta for quite some time, and um, this definitely has uh, been tried and true at this point. So I, I definitely want to push this product because it works great to do this adapting of these old school controllers. So when you uh, get it, you're going to open it up and you're going to, if you have ordered it with a number of um, connectors, you will see these connector cables here. Um, you know, you've got an Atari 2600 or 7800 connection cable. That also works with Genesis controllers and even 3DO controllers. And then uh, even paddles, it'll work with paddles, although the paddle games aren't really going to be what we're using this with today. We're just using it for, uh, you know, joystick type games or gamepad type games. So yeah, so and there are other connectors, you know, this NES uh, connector will work, uh, you've got one for the Jaguar, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you can buy all these cables when you buy your Gamer Pro Advanced. So anyway, let me just go ahead and plug this in, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you see here. This is going to essentially enable um, you know, you not to have much lag at all in your games. So this is the 2600 controller plug, which I will go ahead connect a standard 2600 controller to it and just like the you know Xbox 360 or switch controllers this is not going to actually control what's going on in the menus okay you have to actually go to the game itself and then there we go got the game ready to roll so I selected Atari 7800 centipede and this is one of those titles that doesn't really require you hitting a reset switch or a button to start the game or a start button to start the game like you would on a 5200 game. So it, it's easy to get into the game with a 2600 controller that doesn't have a start button. So um, you'll notice if you set this up and are trying to use a 2600 controller to play, let's say, 2600 games, that um, since you don't have that reset button of your 2600 or a start button, you're ending up having to uh, use the uh, GSP joystick, the wireless one, to get the game started and then switching out to whatever controller you've selected, 2600 controller for instance. It kind of uh, can be a hassle. Now I'm going to play a 5200 game Millipede and this 5200 game does require that you hit that start button 
Um, once you've got that done, then you can actually turn that controller off. And I've plugged in my uh, trackball, my CX-22 Atari 2600 trackball. Now I'm just waiting for it to get connection. It can take a few seconds. Once it uh, gets connection, I, you'll, you'll see it. It'll actually do something. It's still waiting. There we go. All right. And you just press the button and you're in. Now this conversion of Millipede for the Atari 5200 is actually just identical to the Atari 8-bit computer version. So using this uh, trackball, just it feels great and I'm definitely not getting any lag. The controller is just working great. I can kind of move the thing slower and it'll go slower and if I spin it faster. It does pick up speed a bit, so it's kind of nice. I, I definitely think this is a nice version of the game. Total fun. Now I'm going to switch over to the arcade version of Missile Command, which is a three-base Missile Command, and that requires that you have maybe not just one button, but three. Okay, now this controller is really wonderfully controlling Missile Command. I'm definitely able to move it into the right spots. It feels good. Unfortunately, look, I have one base and I've run out of missiles. We're not going to be playing this anymore with this controller. Uh, let's switch over to the 5200 version, which is on the GSP. And yeah, I've got a start button on my 5200 controller and it starts up the game just perfectly and I'm playing pretty well. I mean, it's definitely not quite as awesome as having a trackball, but it is an analog controller. I think it does a pretty good job. Now, I'm going to move forward to the Atari 7800 and we've got Motor Psycho and that's a two-button game. So the button on the left of your 7800 controller is going to accelerate your vehicle. And there's a button on the right side of the controller that will allow you to launch your motorcycle up into the air. So let me show you that. <laughs> yeah. Now um, you've got two gears, low and high. So I'm now I'm on high gear. I'm going to switch it down to low and so I can get around the corner. Go back to high gear. You get better and better at it after a while. It's definitely a unique looking game for the 7800. There you go, now I'm passing some motorcyclists. Getting competitive here. Oh wait, no, no I'm not. <laughs> All right, so now let's go forward to Thunderbolt, which basically look, kind of looks like an NES kind of game. And I've got my NES Star Master joystick out. Might as well play it with that. This game actually is kind of a surprisingly awesome shooter and it has lots of different power-ups and just a unique gameplay. I definitely enjoy this game. <clears throat> Tons of bullets on the screen at times. Gotta be careful. Weaving, dodging, that's what this game's all about. I really like this controller because it, it's not necessarily a micro switch type controller where it has a bunch of clickiness to it, but it's got dome switches that do an extra little thud when you click in each direction. I kind of like that. It feels awesome. So if you don't have a Star Master NES controller, find one. I definitely am recommending it. All right, now we've moved forward to another Atari 7800 game. And we've got Alien Brigade. Yeah, we'll give this a try. This is one of the better 7800 games. And I've switched out now to my Epix 500 XJ, which was that controller I showed earlier in the video. It's actually been converted from an NES controller into a 7800 compatible controller. Now, that is kind of good news for this project because some of you out there own special 7800 controllers, whether it be made by Ed Ladin, uh, Retro Game Boys, um, BD Retro Mods, some of those 7800 controllers, I figure, are probably going to work with this. So uh, you might want to let me know in the comments if that is true. All right, so now I'm switching off to a Genesis game, Top Racer 2. 
Now I've got my handy dandy Genesis gamepad. This is a three button controller. This is actually a three button game. So you're gonna be accelerating with one of the buttons and also it's got a nitro button. That's the second button and then uh, a brake. Obviously you're gonna need that every once in a while, I suppose. So yeah, this is a really nice game. It controls very well, surprisingly. It's not an analog controller, but the game just has been programmed just right for controlling with a digital controller. I, I really like this game. And you should check it out if you get yourself a uh, GSP. This is definitely a cool game. Now I'm gonna skip forward in the game and we're gonna check out the latter uh, part of the race. I've got one more car to pass and I'll get into first. Let's see if I can do it. He's a yellow car somewhere up there. Here he is. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, so close. First place, look at that. All right, yeah, an encouraging day with the Genesis controller. All right, now let's try playing Steel Force. I believe this is a, uh, probably a Genesis game. I could be wrong. Looks like a Genesis game. And I'm playing this with my PlayStation uh, controller that's a joystick. It's the Interact PS Arcade controller. And I threw a picture up on the screen because I'm blocking the controller mostly with my hands. But uh, yeah, that's it right there. Nice controller to use for a game like this. Fun, totally fun. Let's take a look now at getting the Gamer Pro Advanced Adapter prepared to work with the GameStation Pro. So there we are. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in to the USB port. And once that's plugged in, we'll get over and take you to the website of blissbox.net. Okay, so now we've arrived. I'm going to hit Downloads and we'll scroll on down to or over here to the blade of GPA and the GPA download file is right there. You click that and it's loading it in. And now that it's in, you can just open it up with a unzipper and it'll be on your computer. Now we're gonna go to the actual software side of things and we're gonna download a couple of little um, software options. This is the API tool, you'll need that. And you're going to go to the Blissbox Flasher, and you're going to get, go ahead and download that as well. That you'll probably use more for the bridge later in the video, but I'll tell you more about that later. All right, so yeah, now you've got the uh, API tool up and running. And the top bar of the Blissbox API tool shows the status of your uh, Gamer Pro Advanced. And when it's orange colored like that, that means it's up and running. So now you're gonna press the button on your Gamer Pro Advanced. I'm gonna just call it the GPA, okay? Press the update on the screen there and it allows you while holding that button of your GPA to select the GPA hex file that you've downloaded. And once that's in your system, click OK. And I'm just gonna I had to close out the program, reopen it, but now I'm going to show you a couple things you have to do to do the settings. Okay, there's the D-pad, UDLR, it has to be highlighted, and then just click Saved Modes. Now you're going to go over to the mapper, and once you've clicked on that, you're going to see a, that's a custom mapping. Okay, so let me show it to you with a little magnification here. You'll want yours to look identical to this. And you're noticing probably that the only adjustments made were in that first column, not the second or third. Now, what you're going to do next is to save to EEPROM. Make sure that box is checkmarked and then click apply. And now you can go ahead and disconnect or unplug your Gamer Pro Advance and take it over to your uh, GSP, plug it in. Now here's a special dual controller connection method that can make using the 2600 joystick less of a hassle. So yeah, I've got the uh, little connector for the USB-C. That's going to go on your GPA right there. And then you'll plug your um, 2600 controller uh, connector to your GPA.
And once you've taken care of that, you're going to be going over and grabbing a 9-pin uh, splitter cable. Two male to one female. Now that's got a metal end on it, and unfortunately these do not fit together. So you have to go and get an uh, extension cord, a 9-pin extension, and just plug that in. Now, this is for the purpose of using that start button on your Genesis controller to start those 2600 games. So once you've got them plugged in to your splitter uh, together, then you have yourself a situation where you can actually start up your game instead of uh, having to unplug and replug with that uh, wireless GSP joystick. So let's go ahead and take a look at AquaVenture. And yeah, I just got into the game with the GSP wireless joystick. Now we've got two controllers that are capable of doing things. So yeah, got the Genesis controller, pick it up, works just fine. This will be only workable with a three button Genesis controller, not the six button. Just letting you know. All right, so yeah, I think maybe what we'll do next is put that controller down, pick up the 2600 controller and see how that works out. Okay. Right. Yeah, this is actually kind of an extra fun game. It's one of those newer release games. I think it's a homebrew, if I'm not mistaken. Get your treasure and get out of there. Yep. You gotta have some quick reflexes to get up to the top. And no, you don't get the bends if you rise too fast. All right, now we've got a little bit of Genesis controller on Yara's Revenge. Ah, let's switch over to the controller I'm very used to playing with. My 2600 joystick, the CX-40. Now we're talking. Yeah, works pretty nicely. And now I'll show you a way to get your controllers working on the game station's menus and not just the games. There's more complexity to this method of adapting, but some of you may want to try it. All right, so if you're ready to roll, I'll show you this. This is the uh, Blissbox Bridge, and it comes with this little um, connector that's a USB uh, plug-in. And that USB plug-in is going to be plug in, plugging into your GameStation Pro, and you need that USB-C connection. So I'm going to plug that into it, and here we go. And then in that USB port, plugs your Gamer Pro Advanced. All right, we've got that plugged together, and now we're ready to rock and roll. Well, almost. There's one more thing you're going to need, and that is the Magic NS controller adapter. And these things run about, I don't know, $18.99 or $19.99 on Amazon.com. So you can check out uh, that. It is designed for Switch game console but it's also designed for other consoles as well. And it has different modes and little lights um, will indicate which mode that you're gonna use. So you have to use the instruction manual to figure that out, but uh, you kinda want it to have the yellow mode accessed. On your GPA, you're gonna wanna use this button mapping instead of the other one. So definitely take a look at this, you'll need it. And at the beginning of our episode, I showed the Blissbox Flasher version 2.0. You're going to need that to program your bridge. I would suggest watching Wired Up Retro episode number 84. See the description below for the timestamp in that video that you would want to uh, check out to enable you to get that bridge up and running the proper way. So anyway, when you plug it into your GSP, this is what you get actually get your PlayStation controller, that's the one I selected, working in the menus. So I'm going to try Thunderbolt 2. Yeah, so obviously kind of is a little bit more of an all-around option that you know some of you may want. It's a little more expensive to buy the bridge, but uh, the bridge has just got some special capabilities that were discussed in Wear It Up Retro episode 84. And that includes being able to use your Gamer Pro Advance on other consoles like, I don't know, for instance, Super NES, Atari Jaguar, 
Atari 5200 to use various controllers on all those kinds of consoles. It is a really a wonderful, uh, unique adapter that can do some pretty cool stuff. And now for the grand finale, getting the arcade version of 3Base Missile Command to work with the Atari CX-22 trackball. Now, remember, this is uh, basically going to be involving that Magic NS controller adapter and the bridge, the GPA, and your single button Atari trackball. Now, how in the world am I going to access 3Base Missile Command? Well, I just have that in yellow mode, and we are now trying to connect wirelessly with a Xbox One controller. And once this uh, you know, is detected, then they'll be connected, and it'll be a wireless connection. You could use this controller to play 3Base Missile Command, or maybe you could just use either of these controllers. So I'm going to go ahead and set this right here, and we'll get playing the game. I've got the buttons accessed uh, on the Xbox One controller, while the trackball itself will be on the uh, Atari controller. So watch me. This is going to be an interesting playthrough. There we go. From the alpha base. And we've got all three bases in action using those different buttons on the Xbox One controller. Wow, so cool to use the actual Atari CX-22 to play the original arcade version of Missile Command. I have never done that before. Well, that's about all we have for today's episode. I certainly hope you enjoyed the episode, and we have upcoming episodes that have to do with the Atari Game Station Pro. So definitely stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, definitely give me a subscribe and uh, hit that bell for notifications so you can see videos when they first come out. And you can definitely give me a like if you enjoyed this video today. Uh, comment below if you have questions about the Atari Game Station Pro and different controllers that maybe you didn't see me use on this episode. I'm here for you. You can definitely uh, voice any question you might have and I'll respond. Okay? So hopefully you guys keep gaming out there, enjoy your life, and uh, play some good games. All right, take care. Thank you.